Humanity has always tilted its gaze skyward, straining telescopes toward the infinite black, waiting for the faintest sign that we are not alone, hoping for a message written in light or carved in sound from some distant star. We have searched for decades, centuries even, whispering questions into the void and listening for echoes. And yet when it finally came, the answer was not born from some hidden civilization cloaked in the glow of a distant galaxy. It came from something far closer. It came from an interstellar object, cutting straight through our solar system, a visitor now known as Three-Eye Atlas. For months, astronomers had been baffled by its shimmering emerald glow, its unpredictable pulses of energy, and its quiet defiance of everything we thought we understood about comets. This was no frozen rock lazily tumbling through the sun's light. This was something else, something deliberate. And now the mystery surrounding Three-Eye Atlas has deepened beyond imagination. If you're watching this and you feel the pull of the unknown tightening around your thoughts, subscribe now. This story is not just unfolding, it's accelerating. What you're about to hear may be the only record of a truth no one wants to admit aloud. Instruments across the world have confirmed what only a handful of scientists dared to whisper at first. Atlas is not radiating randomly, it is broadcasting, sending focused, directed pulses of energy aimed with surgical precision at Mars. At first, these readings were dismissed as glitches or coincidences, but then came the moment that left even the most skeptical scientists speechless. Mars itself had responded. For the first time in human history, we were witnessing what looked like a dialogue, not between two living beings, but between a wandering visitor from beyond the stars and a neighboring planet we had always believed was silent and dead. If this is true, then everything we know about the universe, about Mars, and about our own fragile place within it, will never be the same again. It began quietly, as so many world-shattering discoveries do, with data too strange to be taken seriously. Astronomers already knew Atlas pulsed in regular intervals, its emerald glow brightening and dimming every 173 minutes with a rhythm too precise to dismiss as coincidence. But then came a pulse that was different. It wasn't scattered outward like the others, diffusing into the void. It was focused, compressed into a single sharp beam aimed directly at Mars. Orbiters circling the red planet immediately registered the spike, recording bursts of radiation strong enough to penetrate the thin Martian atmosphere and light it up in shimmering green for several minutes. At first it was dismissed as an anomaly, a quirk of angles or a flare of solar interference, but when it happened again, same duration, same direction, same power, the conclusion was inescapable. Atlas was sending a message. It was not random. It was not blind. For the first time, humanity had evidence that an interstellar visitor had chosen a target for its signal, and it had chosen Mars. The response came not in days or weeks, but almost immediately. Satellites orbiting Mars began to record electromagnetic bursts rising from the planet itself, pulses that matched Atlas's frequency but carried subtle variations, as if not simply reflecting the original signal, but transforming it. Scientists first thought these were echoes, natural reverberations bouncing through Mars's thin magnetosphere. But closer analysis showed otherwise. The pulses were delayed by precise intervals, shifted slightly in frequency, and structured in a way that suggested intentional modulation. Even more startling, Earth-based telescopes began detecting faint harmonics bouncing back across space, as if Mars were amplifying the signal and returning it. To those who studied the data, it was as though Atlas had sent a question, and Mars had answered in kind, repeating the language in its own voice. Suddenly, a world long thought to be barren and silent had become a participant in an interplanetary dialogue. Its thin skies and dusty ground now vibrated with the energy of a message that came from beyond the stars. The mystery deepened when seismic monitors on Mars, left behind by missions long past, began to register activity unlike anything recorded before. The tremors were not chaotic but rhythmic, perfectly synchronized with the pulses from Atlas. These vibrations echoed deep into the planet's mantle, as if the very crust of Mars had become a resonant instrument, singing in harmony with the interstellar visitor. Even more unsettling, the frequencies mapped onto geometric shapes when translated into spectrograms, spirals, hexagons, and triangles identical to the luminous patterns astronomers had already observed in Atlas's glowing coma. 
This was not coincidence. The red planet was not merely reflecting energy. It was answering with its own voice, speaking through the ground itself. For some researchers, this hinted at the possibility that something deep beneath the Martian surface, an ancient structure, a buried ocean, or even a long dormant system, had been activated by Atlas's call. Others went further, suggesting that Mars itself was alive in ways we had never imagined, capable of resonating like a vast organism stirred by a signal from the stars. Whatever the truth, it was undeniable. Mars was responding, and the implications of this exchange could not be contained. As Atlas pulsed and Mars responded, Earth itself began to feel the resonance. Radio telescopes around the globe picked up faint harmonics identical to the Martian echoes. Patterns embedded in the static matched Atlas's signal, but were transformed by the red planet's response. Independent researchers posted their findings online, spectrograms showing eerie geometries hidden in the bursts, only to see their accounts vanish mysteriously hours later. Governments issued no explanations. NASA remained silent, and yet the truth spread. Humanity was no longer a bystander. We were listening in on a cosmic dialogue, a conversation not meant for us, but unfolding in plain sight. And as the patterns grew stronger, as Mars's signals became clearer, a haunting realization took hold. Whatever Atlas had asked, Mars had answered. And the echoes of that exchange were already reaching Earth. Phobos and Deimos, the two small moons of Mars, had always been considered little more than captured asteroids, lifeless rocks circling a barren world. But when Atlas's signal reached Mars and the planet began to answer, something extraordinary happened. Instruments aboard orbiters detected that Phobos was reflecting bursts of electromagnetic radiation perfectly synchronized with Mars's pulses, like a relay node amplifying the exchange. Deimos, fainter and further out, responded differently, glowing intermittently with an emerald sheen that telescopes on Earth captured as flashes against the black of space. These were not mere reflections of sunlight. They were timed, structured, deliberate. The moons, long thought irrelevant, had suddenly become active participants in the dialogue. Scientists scrambled to explain how such small inert bodies could interact with the signal, but the simplest explanation was also the most unsettling. The entire Martian system had been awakened, as if every rock and every orbiting body had been waiting for the call from Atlas. At first, rovers on Mars seemed unaffected, continuing their daily tasks of measuring dust, capturing images and transmitting data. But as the pulses intensified, one by one their feeds began to fail. The first sent corrupted files filled with streaks of green static. Another transmitted a final blurred image of the horizon, illuminated by an unnatural glow before going offline. Engineers on Earth fought to regain control, sending command after command, but the machines remained silent. Then came the most disturbing detail. One rover transmitted a single burst of data moments before shutting down. A stream of binary code that, when decoded, formed repeating prime numbers identical to the patterns hidden in Atlas's pulses. The conclusion was impossible to ignore. The rovers had not malfunctioned randomly. They had been pulled into the resonance compelled to echo the same mathematical signature that linked Atlas and Mars. Our mechanical explorers had, in their final moments, become part of the signal. Soon after the rovers went silent, Earth itself began to intercept strange signals carried on the interplanetary background noise. Radio telescopes in Australia, South Africa and Chile picked up faint bursts that matched both Atlas's frequency and the Martian echoes. At first they appeared as static, but careful analysis revealed sequences repeating in prime numbers, just like those transmitted by the rovers. More disturbing was the discovery that the signals grew stronger when Mars rotated certain regions into view, as though those specific parts of the Martian surface were acting as transmission nodes.